The COVID epidemic is ravaging communities across the nation, including many right here in Connecticut. But some local health officials say far more people may be suffering from opioid addiction than the state actually reports. If that's the case, it could mean the opioid crisis is far more worse than previously thought. Fox 61's Nia Hamm joins us uh, right now here in studio with a special report. Nia. Jen, Lorenzo, that's right. The issue has to do with the way the state tracks and reports opioid overdoses, which some health officials say is flawed and presents a misleading scope of the problem. Because Connecticut is leading in terms of a rise in opioid deaths, they say it's important now more than ever to know how bad the opioid epidemic really is. The only word I could describe what it's like to lose a child is it's, it's human torture. Ginger Katz lost her son, 20-year-old Ian Eccarino, to a drug overdose involving opioids more than two decades ago. She was shocked when doctors told her to lie about how he died. To tell people that he died of an aneurysm or a heart attack. Why? because of the stigma and the shame. That stigma and shame makes it hard for health officials to understand the full scope of the opioid epidemic. And that is why Katz founded the Courage to Speak Foundation, which works so to prevent similar tragedies to her son's through education and creating a space for people to be honest about the opioid crisis. Some other health officials say another big reason opioid addiction is not fully understood is because the state has only been counting opioid overdose deaths, not survivors. We don't know how many people are and in, in essence sick and overdosing. David Knopf, Town of Darien Director of Health, says that's because an opioid overdose is not on a list of reportable diseases and conditions, which requires health professionals to report the cases to the state. Sexually transmitted disease, flu is one that's uh, reportable. Knopf, who also co-chairs the Connecticut Association of Directors of Health Substance Abuse Ad Hoc Committee, says opioid overdoses should not only be a reportable condition, but immediately reportable. If we're having bad, bad Patches of drugs running through communities, it should be immediately reportable so we can have an immediate response. And this epidemic didn't start in the last 10 years. It started before my son died. Echo Reno died in 1996 after becoming addicted to heroin, cocaine, and the opioid Valium in college. Since then, opioid overdoses have been rising steadily, claiming over a thousand lives in Connecticut just last year, according to the state's medical examiner. The state has been measuring the severity of the problem by tracking the use of the opioid antidote Narcan. It was used over 4,000 times in 2017. The downside, they don't track identities and could count some repeat overdose patients multiple times. Connecticut Public Health Commissioner Raul Pino says his agency has come up with a solution. We have developed this system that it gives us the ability to uh, basically on real time, very close to real time, uh, get a uh, first glance of what is happening at the ER and em emergency rooms across the state. It's called the syndromic surveillance system. When it's fully operational in several weeks or several months, it will track how many people are treated in the state's nearly 40 emergency rooms for fatal and non-fatal opioid-related issues, including overdoses. But there are drawbacks. For one, it will give patients an ID number that can only be used in each individual hospital instead of recording their identities. So you can have a person who comes to the emergency room at St. Francis Hospital one day and to the emergency room at Hartford Hospital another day. And the system may count that person twice rather than as a person who had two different opioid-related incidences. Also, the syndromic system will only use emergency room data, which won't account for people who never make it there. We can't really develop a program without having a full scope of the, uh, of the issue. You're gonna have additional deaths. It's just going to increase. But Commissioner Pino says there are privacy concerns. We have some concerns about what is going, how that information about an individual that has been overdosed is going to be used. Katz says the issue of privacy is what has kept too many opioid abusers in the shadows, including her late son. And I think we have to be honest and we need the numbers because if we have the numbers, we'll be able to get the funding to put out this fire. Now, Commissioner Pino says the state has made some progress. For example, the number of opioid prescriptions has reduced by 100,000 a year, and the rate at which opioid deaths occur each year has stabilized. Boy.
Sounds like there's a lot more work to be done. Uh, did the commissioner talk at all about the state implementing other better methods to track opioid overdoses to you? Yeah, some things that are coming in the future. One is an app that first responders would use to report opioid-related incidents as including overdoses that's on the ground in real time. Another is a centralized computer system that would keep better track of all opioids in all emergency, uh, all opioid-related incidences in all emergency rooms across the state. Oh, great reporting there, Nia. Thank really you so much. Yeah. Thank you very much.